Hello, welcome to NextMids. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please hit the subscribe button for daily videos about health, nutrition, and disease-related videos. Cellulitis is a common bacterial skin infection that affects the deeper layers of the skin and subcutaneous tissues, typically caused by bacteria such as Streptococcus or Staphylococcus. Cellulitis often develops when bacteria enter the body through a break or crack in the skin such as a cut, scrape, insect bite, or puncture wound. This infection can occur anywhere on the body, but most commonly affects the legs, arms, and face. The pathophysiology of cellulitis involves the invasion of bacteria into the deeper layers of the skin and subcutaneous tissues, triggering an inflammatory response. Here's a breakdown of the key steps involved. Entry of bacteria Cellulitis typically begins when bacteria, most commonly Streptococcus or Staphylococcus species, enter the body through a breach in the skin barrier. This breach can be caused by a variety of factors, including cuts, scrapes, insect bites, surgical wounds, or skin conditions like eczema. Inflammatory response Once inside the body, the bacteria multiply rapidly and release toxins, triggering an inflammatory response by the immune system. This response involves the activation of various immune cells, including neutrophils and macrophages, which migrate to the site of infection to combat the invading bacteria. Vasodilation and increased permeability. Inflammatory mediators released by immune cells, such as histamine and cytokines, cause blood vessels in the affected area to dilate and become more permeable. This increased blood flow and vascular permeability lead to characteristic signs of inflammation, including redness, swelling, warmth, and pain. Tissue damage. The bacterial toxins and the immune system's inflammatory response can cause damage to surrounding tissues, including the skin, subcutaneous fat, and sometimes deeper structures such as muscles or fascia. This tissue damage contributes to the clinical manifestations of cellulitis and can result in complications if left untreated. Spread of infection. Without prompt treatment, cellulitis can spread locally to adjacent tissues and structures. In severe cases, bacteria may enter the bloodstream, leading to bacteremia or sepsis, which can be life-threatening. Cellulitis typically presents with several hallmark symptoms, which can vary in severity depending on the extent of the infection and the individual's overall health. Here are the common symptoms associated with cellulitis. Redness or erythema. The affected area of the skin often appears red or pink. The redness may spread gradually from the initial site of infection and may be accompanied by a distinct border between affected and unaffected skin. Swelling or edema. Cellulitis causes swelling in the affected area, which may be mild to moderate in severity. The swelling results from inflammation and fluid accumulation in the tissues. Warmth. The skin over the infected area typically feels warm to the touch. This warmth is due to increased blood flow and inflammation in the affected tissues. Tenderness. Cellulitis is often tender or painful especially when pressure is applied to the affected area. The tenderness may range from mild discomfort to severe pain. Skin changes. In addition to redness, the skin may appear shiny, tight, or stretched over the affected area. Blisters, pustules, or skin dimpling may also develop, particularly in more severe cases. Fever and chills. Systemic symptoms such as fever, chills, and sweating may occur especially if the infection is spreading or causing systemic inflammation. Fever is more common in severe cases of cellulitis or when the infection has spread beyond the skin. Lymphadenopathy, swollen and tender lymph nodes near the site of infection may develop, indicating the body's immune response to the bacterial infection. The diagnosis of cellulitis is primarily based on clinical evaluation, medical history, and physical examination. Here's an overview of the steps typically involved in diagnosing cellulitis. Medical History The healthcare provider will begin by taking a detailed medical history, including information about the onset and duration of symptoms, any recent injuries or skin trauma, 
previous episodes of cellulitis, and any underlying medical conditions that may predispose the individual to skin infections like diabetes, peripheral vascular disease. Physical Examination During the physical examination, the healthcare provider will closely inspect the affected area of the skin. They will assess for characteristic signs of cellulitis, including redness, swelling, warmth, and tenderness. The provider may also check for the presence of skin lesions, blisters, or pustules. Additionally, they may examine nearby lymph nodes for signs of inflammation. Laboratory Tests In most cases, laboratory tests are not required for the diagnosis of uncomplicated cellulitis. However, if the infection is severe, recurrent, or atypical, the healthcare provider may order blood tests such as a complete blood count and blood cultures to assess for systemic signs of infection and identify the causative bacteria. Blood cultures are particularly important if there are signs of systemic illness or if the individual has risk factors for more serious infections. The treatment of cellulitis typically involves a combination of antibiotics and supportive measures to control the bacterial infection, reduce inflammation, relieve symptoms, and prevent complications. Here's an overview of the treatments commonly used for cellulitis. Antibiotics. Antibiotics are the cornerstone of treatment for cellulitis and are prescribed to eradicate the bacterial infection. The choice of antibiotic depends on several factors, including the severity of the infection, the suspected or identified causative bacteria, local resistance patterns, and any underlying medical conditions. Commonly prescribed antibiotics for cellulitis include oral antibiotics such as cephalexin, dicloxacillin, or clindamycin for mild to moderate cases, and intravenous antibiotics such as ceftriaxone, cefazolin, or vancomycin for severe or complicated cases. The duration of antibiotic treatment typically ranges from 5 to 14 days, depending on the response to treatment and clinical improvement. Pain Management Pain and discomfort associated with cellulitis can often be managed with over-the-counter pain relievers such as acetaminophen, Tylenol, or nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen. Severe pain may require prescription pain medications. Elevation. Elevating the affected limb, if applicable, can help reduce swelling and promote drainage of fluid from the affected area. Keeping the affected area elevated above the level of the heart can improve blood circulation and reduce inflammation. Warm compresses. Applying warm compresses or moist heat to the affected area several times a day can help alleviate pain, promote circulation, and facilitate the drainage of pus or fluid from any abscesses that may form. Rest and immobilization. Resting the affected limb and avoiding strenuous activities can help minimize further irritation and promote healing. Immobilization may be necessary in cases where cellulitis affects a joint or causes severe pain with movement. Wound care. Proper wound care is essential for preventing secondary infections and promoting healing. Keeping the affected area clean and dry, covering any open wounds or breaks in the skin with sterile dressings and avoiding further trauma to the area can help prevent complications. Monitoring and follow-up. It's important to closely monitor the progress of cellulitis during treatment and follow-up with a healthcare provider as directed. If symptoms worsen or fail to improve with treatment, or if new symptoms develop, further evaluation may be needed to assess for complications or the need for adjustment of antibiotic therapy. Thank you for watching Next Meds. Please like and subscribe for daily videos about health, nutrition, and diseases.